It's interesting <laughs> how we just can't seem to stop talking when he's trying to start this thing and we just can't seem to hush up. Welcome, welcome. It is May 7th and we were trying to figure out it's been Cinco de Mayo, it's been May Day. I can't remember what May Day is, but anyway, it's been spring. Fe There's so many May activities that May's a fun month. So we've got so many fun things for you guys tonight. We are wrapping up the grade eight. There's reason why we're wrapping it up. And I've asked Laura to join us so that she could also wrap up her experience and what she's kind of gone through. And mm -hmm. it's been a lot of fun. It really has. I really have to thank her for- <laughs> Thanks, Mrs. Sorry, I survived. <laughs> <laughs> for the hours that she's put in, literally the hours that she's put in. All right, so tonight, and the reason I wanted to kind of wrap up is because, and the whole reason I started doing this great eight in the first place was I wanted you to understand that this is a philosophy that you should always incorporate and it, it should just be in your head. I'm hoping that it's in your head so that every time you make a new garment, you think to yourself, what part of this great eight is this piece? Is it a base? Do I need a new base color? Do I need new this? What part of it? Because if you make a garment, and don't link it to anything. We know that we don't get a lot of use out of that garment. We know we walk into our closet and we say, I don't have anything to wear. So the grade eight is really a philosophy. Many designers use it all the time. Teaching it to you as sewers, I felt was really, really important simply because I heard it many times. I have nothing to wear. I made the, the, the I have nothing to wear. So tonight what we're doing is we're expanding that grade eight to those other fun pieces that are not in the grade eight. I'm gonna go over what that grade eight is just so everybody makes sure you know. And, the, and then I wanna see the expansion. Laura's done a couple of just, and they're fun pieces. Mm -hmm. I've done a couple pieces. So you're gonna get a real variety because we've done completely different stuff and we haven't talked about it. So no, we're always surprised at that's each other. The, <laughs> that's the good news. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a busy week for Laura. It's been a busy week for myself. And you know, it's a few phone calls. That's it. Everybody got everything done. All right, so the grade eight, I want to bring up that chart for just a minute and show you what that grade eight can, entails. So we're going to start with the upper left and it was a knit, a knit top. Sleeveless with sleeves, it doesn't matter what it was, but it was a knit top. Then we also had a woven top, which is all the way to the far right on our little diagram. And then we had that extended into a tank dress. Oh, I forgot to ask you something. What? I'm sorry, a customer She's gonna me. send me home across the street no, to get that dress. <laughs> no, I'm not. But do you think, I forgot. Yeah. Do you think you can explain how to make that flower without it? Be thinking about that. Okay, I'll be minute. thinking about that. Okay, okay, all right. I forgot, you guys. I meant to put in a phone call to her before she came, <laughs> and I completely forgot. I was going to say, bring that blue dress. Okay, anyway, so those are how your tops work. Then when we go, and there's a short knit, a long knit, a short woven, and a long woven, mm -hmm. and that gives you quite a bit of variety. And keep in mind, the colors are meant to be varied according to you, according to your personality, according to what you want to make. And you know, never did I ever mean, you guys, I've gotten some of the funniest emails. <laughs> like, you have more than eight pieces in your wardrobe. Why do we have to only have eight? I'm like, it was never intended for you to have eight pieces. It was meant as a base that you could build on. And I definitely have more than eight pieces. I wouldn't even begin to count. We'd be here for a month, okay? You should so see your closet. <laughs> we won't even go there. But anyway, no. it wasn't ever meant for that. It was meant for you to think of how you want to plan and so even if you go on a trip, you can keep it simple, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so then there was a skirt because Laura wanted a skirt, so we put a skirt in there. Mm -hmm. We last week did skirts and we did the 2850 and we've got lots of skirt options now. I'm gonna bring back some of those and kind of complete them. And then of course we've got um, a pant, mm -hmm. a capri, and a knit. Mm -hmm. So we've got a dress pant, kind of, and a, a knit pant, and leggings. And leggings. That's right. Okay, so that's our grade eight. Any questions that we can answer about that grade eight? We're good to go. It takes a little, there is a little delay. So if they come back in, we'll, we'll address them when they come back in. But any questions about just the base, why it is, et cetera, et cetera, we're happy to answer. Okay? All right, so what I did is I put up a grade eight bonus pack, kind of. You know, there's three patterns, they're both bonuses, great bonuses. They're 95, which is Brooks Top, which is the one I made for Laura. We'll show you that. 
It's 112, which is Casey's five-way top. I will show you that. And then there is 211, which is a great top again. Those are all just fun um, tops where you can see that if you make one top, you'll get a lot of momentum out of it now and a lot of different ways to use it. The jacket I have on tonight I made because I wanted you to see that it wasn't necessarily just sportswear because uh, some of the emails I got were, I actually have to work. And I'm like, okay, so a lot of us do. Um, and she didn't understand how the grade eight applied to if she had to go to work. And I think it's not more important if you work or more important if you don't, it's equally important. But it does, I think, make your work wardrobe go farther. So I did a grade eight, I did the jacket. This is 1500 that I have on. I did it with a little leather trim. It's got a little leather button. Um, it's got a leather side panel, I forgot. It's got a little leather side panel just to break up the stripes. So the goal again was I'm gonna put it on with my same little tank. I'm gonna put it on with my same pants and I, or I could wear it with that skirt, that little black skirt I made last time. I put it on with that. It looks really well with that also. So it doesn't have to be casual wear. It can go all the way across the board. The fabrics, you can make them as dressy or as casual as you want, and we can go mm -hmm. from there, okay? Okay, so that's our little intro as to where we're going. I used a size 6W in knits. I used a sleeve size, I'm sorry, 6W in knits. When I make Hugo's cardigan, should I go up a size to 7W since I'll be wearing long sleeve tops under it, or stick with 6W? I think that's a good question. If I'm gonna make a cardigan and it's long sleeve, then I'm gonna make a sleeveless top to go underneath it. I don't like sleeves inside of sleeves. I don't care what month it is. I don't care how cold it is. I feel like a polar bear in a straight jacket when I have a sleeve and a sleeve. So if that is you, you're gonna to have to decide. But the way to decide is to measure some of the clothes you wear and figure out how much difference. I would not assume it to be one whole size. That seems too dramatic for me, but you might cut the sizes in between, go in between a six and a seven, and then go in between a six and a seven armhole, and that will probably bring you closer to where you want to be. All right, are we okay with yeah. questions? Okay. Um, just saying one thing about that more is there was a gal in a class one time, and she had sleeve, she wore sleeves and sleeves. And she just decided she could sew things up so fast once they fit, she would make the same thing in sleeveless, short sleeve, and long sleeve. Same fabric. So that she could mix and match those. I think Absolutely. that's a good idea because you can make them up really quick. And you know, sometimes the long sleeve works and sometimes you need the short sleeve. I've actually done the same thing. So I think it's a valid question. I think sometimes we have to decide what we wanna do. Okay, we're gonna jump to Laura because Laura's first thing she made was remember that white linen? that I had thrown in the washer and thrown in the dryer. It didn't mm -hmm. shrink, it didn't do anything. I gave it to Laura. She came <laughs> yes, over, she she came over make this. <laughs> and I said, okay, you gotta make this. Yeah, you gotta make this. And it's all pre-washed, your Coke pre-washed. Right, I had all, I washed it in Coca-Cola, right. that's you right. Went there. A couple times, I think, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting kinda long, Coca-Cola. <laughs> I've done a lot of washing lately. Like yeah. <laughs> so, um, so she went off, so we, it, what, and you guys have seen this, but I, I <laughs> Laura takes it on a whole different level. So, what did you call this? Oh my goodness. Well, don't, we won't say that, we won't say it. It doesn't matter. It's just a circle. It was a circle. It's so a big it's a circle. 26 inch, uh, well, it's actually 52. It's okay. a 52 inch round. Uh -huh. So if you fold it in half, it makes it 26. And if you fold it in half again, you get like a, um, a, a, a quadrant. Yeah. So you've got the quadrant down in this corner and you've got it curved going this way. Can we draw Can that? Have a picture? Let's draw that. I should have had a picture, but I don't have a picture. Oh, I thought you had one here. No, I don't. Now let's draw that. Do I, ha can I, do I have my pad available to me? Sorry. All right, so when Laura was here and I showed her this wonderful linen fabric mm -hmm. that I had washed and she was ready to use. No picture. Oh. Mm, good question. You got a blank? Yeah, don't pull that one up. That'll be too confusing. 
Yeah, can I do that? Yeah, sorry, I, I messed it up. My technical team cannot read my brain and I just think they can. So I do wanna draw this for you, it'll just be a little easier. You probably get it, but just mm -hmm. to make sure. I find that the more clear that I make this, the less emails I get. So it's really helpful to make it clear just to cut down on my email response. All right, so we're gonna take the fabric in length, it's 52, we're gonna fold it in half lengthwise. It's probably 60 inches wide, so you're gonna fold it in half widthwise. And you put the folds all down at the bottom. Thank you, Benjamin. Okay, so you put the folds. They can see that whole thing? Well, that's cool. Okay, so you put the folds. I clicked it off, sorry. The fold goes down here. The fold goes here. And then you cut a semicircle like that. That's as easy, as hard as, as it gets. gets. Okay? So this is a fold here. This is a fold here. And those are the raw edges. Then you take and cut slits. You go six inches from this edge. And you go six inches up. And you cut it. Those are going to become the armholes. That's it. You can finish the edges however you want. These edges have to be raw because you can't use selvage. You can't because it's, it's, there's no way to do it. I've tried it a zillion different ways. You can cut the selvage off. You can put it back on, but that's it. That's the best it gets. Okay, so we did this with this linen. We folded it. We slid it. We slid it. <laughs> I walked home with it. I put it on Laura. I said, look, Laura, isn't this cute? <laughs> And she said, yeah, I really like it. <laughs> I did But she time. was not telling the truth. No, when I got in front of my big mirror at home. So she went <laughs> home. And looked. And she cut it up because she didn't like it. <laughs> it no, it, it just didn't, it wasn't for me. Because and it made her look like the flying nun. <laughs> that is true. I mean, from the back. And it really, it wasn't the fabric. The linen is absolutely gorgeous and it wrinkles great. The texture's great, but it just wasn't me. And if there's one thing I've learned from this series is comfort and confidence in myself. And I really appreciate her saying that. So she said, well, I don't, should we tell them? Yes, we should tell them. <laughs> yes, okay. we should be truthful. <laughs> we should tell them. So what she did, this is it. Yeah, she this just, is the circle. She just, um, go, took, let's go back to the drawing here for a second. What she did is she came here to this part right here and she cut three, three inches, inches all the way. Uh -huh. So instead of her starting off, if she wanted to save a little bit of fabric, remember that it was 52 inches. She could have reduced that by six inches. So she could uh -huh. have gone down to 56. Uh -huh. Which some fabrics. No, no, I said 52, 46, I'm yeah. sorry. So hers was 46 by 46 to start with. And then she folded it and cut her six inches. I don't care what size you are. Don't change where you cut the armhole. Right. But she made her smaller. And this is adorable. I and mean, then, it's hard to tell her. I don't think she looked like the flying nun. <laughs> I'm going to have her turn around. She didn't see it. <laughs> I did. I saw it originally. But you can just see it's a little shorter. It's a little sassier. I'm going to try mine on. Mm -hmm. Because I made one too, and mm -hmm. I'll show you what I made it with. Who knows, maybe I'll shorten mine after this is all over. Oh, well, I do have to but, say, I came in three inches more with the braid and then um, cut it for fringe and then washed it again. Okay, so yeah, you gotta catch on to all this because yeah. it's really cute. I want you to kind of turn around. Can you turn and talk at the same time? Sure. Okay, so there's, so this was the edge of the three inches. She came in three inches more and that's where she put the braid. Mm -hmm. And then she did a stopping point mm -hmm. and then and she cut it. Right, you have the braid on and where I, I determined where the break point was on me. So this braid is applied on top, and the same braid is applied on top from the break point all the way around because the braids look different on each side. And I don't know what, exactly why it's sewn the same way, but this is braid on the other side. So in effect, you, you sew braid around both sides the whole way. Really and then cute. I started cutting. And so she got a little fringe out of it. I did, I got some fringe out of it. It's adorable. And um, washed it in the coat Okay, wash. and then you gotta see another really cool part because and I'll show you on mine, what I did is I just, um, like I just surged the edges and left them. I've done, a, I've done so many different things. There's so many different things. 
You started to do a rolled edge. Rolled edge did not I work. I did do a whole rolled edge on the, the original without any cutting off of any anything. The rolled edge. And that's what she looked like a flying nun. Right. Because it kind of stuck out a little bit. My, my rolled edge maybe was a little thicker. Maybe I had my surface. So the shirt. reason I bring this up is because it's really important when you're deciding how am I going to finish something mm -hmm. to look at your machines, assess the fabric, assess what may go wrong, what's plan A, right. what's plan B. You know, a sewer is like... Plan A doesn't always happen. It just doesn't always make it. So you got we want to kind of work it backwards and, mm -hmm. and figure out what goes wrong. This is way better. I want you to see what she did with her armholes. Oh, yes. So her armholes, she took in a black and white. you got to tell this ranger. story. you got to tell why. Well, even though I only live across the street, by the time Peggy <laughs> cut it and I got across the street and folded it and unfolded it, the armholes were just completely frayed. And so I had to fix those. In fact, one had, had actually frayed down a whole inch, so my armholes are probably seven, but it works out. And I found this little ribbon in my stash. It's just grow grain ribbon. Uh, can't remember where I got Stashes them. are wonderful Stashes things. are great. I you know, I think all like. these years I've told you all to not have stashes, and every time I hear somebody say that, I, I have to take back those words. Stashes yeah. are amazing. <laughs> so anyway, grow grain ribbon just uh, stitched. Um, it's adorable. Two pieces it's really cute. coming together, like a big buttonhole. It is. It's, it's, it's basically, that's what it is. Kind of like a big welt pocket? Yeah, or a big welt pocket. Okay. And so that was before I cut the three inches off. This was the, the grain ribbon was still on the uh, the original piece. So now do you like it? Yeah. Do you really I would think you wear, wear it? I would wear it, and not like that, I've, I've got another one in the, in the works. Well, how about that? <laughs> how about that? All right, so... Lesson learned. Think before you, yeah, you decide think, your process. I do think it's hard uh -huh. when you look at something and don't know what it is exactly. that you don't like right. to figure out what it is that you do like. Exactly. But I would throw out to you that almost every time you do that, it's proportions. The proportions are out of whack. So I would say to you, if you look at something and you don't know why you don't like it, I would check proportions. Mm -hmm. So for her, the, the proportions were probably too big, bigger than what she felt comfortable. Right, it was too much fabric on me. Or maybe it's too much white on me. I don't, I know. don't know. I don't know. Like she didn't like it. I liked it. I said, oh, I love it. It's so cute. And off she goes. And this is what I see is... back a week later. <laughs> okay, so what I want to show you, oh, I'm the sorry. Closure. Please repeat where to cut armhole. Where would you put a closure on that topper if you want one? I'm going to give you that in yeah. just a second. Okay, so let's go back to this drawing. And thank you, Benjamin. So you measure in right here from the folded edge, six inches. And then you cut up six inches. And you're cutting through all layers. Mm -hmm. So your armhole is actually going to be 12 inches in length. And they're 12 inches apart from armhole to armhole across your back. Because again, you're cutting, you'll be cutting through four layers because it's folded this way and then folded this way and you've put the two folds into the corner. Okay? You know one thing I do so like if I can about it? I can steal your paper. What do you like sure. about it? You can adjust how much hang you want, you basically. Can. And that, I think, that's I'm going to show you a couple options with it. Okay. But if I took a piece of paper and I folded it this way, that's the length. And then I folded it this way. You see you have two folds. One is here and one is here. Those are what have to go in the corner. And you cut these uneven edges here. All right. So once you fold it, once you fold it, kind of turn it around. The fold goes here, the fold goes here. And you cut those open edges. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to have her put on this one. So let me tell you what I did. Because remember this skirt that I did last time? This was the mm -hmm. silk that I love. That's twenty-eight fifty. I did the two layers, silk gauze. I wanted to make something that went with it. So you can, what I did is I belted it and I left it long. But maybe I'll cut it off after tonight. <laughs> what a compliment. <laughs> maybe I'll cut it off. But I did make a little belt out of the selvage of the fabric because this fabric is adorable. This fabric is... Um, I'm supposed to be telling you these fabrics because I get so many emails on fabric numbers that I'm trying to cut down on that. So her linen is 1705. Um, this pink wrap is 1638. The skirt is 1645. 
The jacket I have on is 16, I'm sorry, 1736. Okay. The black base that I have on is 1600. So can you take off the top so we can see what Laura is saying oh. about the buttonhole effect? So that's what she's saying. She just literally put the tape on top of the deal uh -huh. and sewed it down. And sewed it down up here also. So that's what she's talking uh -huh. is like a little buttonhole effect. Right. Because you, it's like a little well pocket. She just stitched it all down on top. Both on the inner and outer sides. Your obviously. stitching looks really good. So she did good. Okay, those are the armholes. Armholes are not six, they're 12 because you cut. Uh -huh you know, through all the layers, and so they end up being double. Okay, okay are we good with that? Oh, Peggy, do you prefer this nice design that Laura has instead of your pattern wrap mm -hmm. 85? Not at all. Uh -uh. It's totally uh -uh. two different two animals, different. you guys. This is, you know, here's the beauty of both, to be honest is this can be done with any fabric. We've mm -hmm. seen it in shears, we've seen it with knits, we've seen it with wovens. And the whole reason I wanna show you this one, can I use you as sure. my model? Yes. Oh. Is because, yeah, don't fly away on me, Miss Nunn. <laughs> is because, <laughs> remember, this is a Rebecca Taylor fabric. So I made this skirt, I wanted something to go on top, but I didn't want something as structured as a jacket but I couldn't have used 85 because 85 is a knit so this comes in it's a perfect pairing when I just want something that's soft and feminine and easy mm -hmm. and quick and it's very soft it's coca-cola again yeah okay this so, is softer than this actually this is pink is it's softer it is. Yeah, this is beautiful. So. Yeah. This is one hundred percent. I wouldn't cut this off. This is one hundred percent cotton. Cotton is a is generally softer when you're doing your fabrics than what linen is. Linen mm -hmm. has a little more. Even if you wash it a whole bunch, linen just has a little more hand and body to mm -hmm. it than what the cotton does. But I it want her to great. turn around. See, so you can see that that's just a different look than what she had, but completely different to me than the eighty five because of the looks and the fabrics that you get from that whole thing okay sorry is this the cut on the side with two sections or just one is this the cut on the side I'm not sure what that question is because it's all four. here but here's what we're gonna do we're gonna fold this up so that you can see it okay mm -hmm. and Laura you can go change okay is that we're gonna work That's fine okay so here's the circle big circle. So it's been folded in half. Remember I started with 52 inches. I'm going to pretend there's no armholes there for a minute. So it's folded in half this way. It's folded in half this way. So there's the little half circle. You got a folded edge here. You got a folded edge at the bottom. You cut this off. And then there's your armhole. And you notice you're cutting through all the layers. You go in six inches and cut down six inches. And that's going to give you your armholes. That's it. It's that easy. Don't make it any more complex. You can wrap it. You can do belts. You can do so much with it. You can do it out of shears. What I like about it is it applies to every fabric out there. And if you just want a little cover, a little wrap, you go for it and you do that. And because I had this cute little skirt, I wanted something that was soft. I didn't want a structured jacket like what I have on, but I loved the fabric and it coordinated just beautifully. Okay, so we're gonna put that to the side. Okay, we should be good on that. We've got lots more, you guys. We're, we're gonna zip by so that we get through everything. I am ready, can okay. I fix it? Sure. Okay, so Laura, on this one, hang on. Okay, we're going to open this up a little bit okay. so that you're more comfortable. Mm -hmm. And also it brings the knot down a little bit. Good. All right, is that mm -hmm. cute? That is. Okay, so remember some time ago, 
Do you like it? I like it. I, I like she the may contrast. not really like it. I do. I do. I tell the truth on the if show. If y'all never see it, you guys, let me know. <laughs> okay, so this is a fabric we had, and this fabric is. Um, gosh, you guys, I make these notes, and I can't even read them myself. Fifteen. Okay. Yeah, 1554. 1554. Thank you. I <laughs> don't know what my glasses are. 1554. So, Laura picked this out because she loved the fabric. Mm -hmm. It's also 100% cotton. Turn around. And, and soft. That. It's really soft. And it's beautiful. I mean, mm -hmm. it's really, again, it just makes, even if your base was it's comfortable. yellow or pink or mm -hmm. whatever, a black and white goes with everything. It doesn't have to be black underneath. It goes with everything. So, there's so mm -hmm. much you can do with that. It is really comfortable, mm -hmm. but the other thing I use them for is if I go into, you know, in the summertime, everything is so cold inside, I, I always need to have something to put on because I'm just really, really cold. So this is George's Wrap. We called it George's Wrap. Mm -hmm. So I'll explain how you do that. We have done it several times before, so I'm just going to show you again. Sweater net twist, yeah. Yeah. All right, so there's only one seam. You're going to cut a piece of fabric that is 58 inches long. Let's say 58. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, 58 by 22. Okay, 58 by 22. Mm -hmm. Now what we did with this is because it was wider than 22, we both got one. <laughs> we shared. <laughs> okay. So if we show up at the same event, we'll have to call each other and say, what are you wearing? So 58 by 22, you fold the 58 I'm gonna, you're gonna pretend this piece of paper is 58 by 22. Mm -hmm. You're gonna fold it in half. Okay? Then you're gonna take the back edge and you're gonna turn it up. On the diagonal. On the diagonal. But you're not gonna sew it to what it's touching. You're just gonna slip it to the back of what it's not touching. And that's your one seam. That's, that's it. it. The front to that's the back. That's it. I mean, the top to the basic bottom. You push the center section down. That's right. That's so a good way work. to say that. You yeah. push the center section down. There'll right. be three layers. You push, push the, the center, center section down. That's good. And then you sew the front to the back. That's it. You sew one to three. Once you do that, the seam ends up being over here. So you can see those are the two wrong sides. This twist. This long, if you're using a stripe, this long, beautiful part here will be on a bias. So your fabrics of stripes, and I mean, I've done a lot of different fabrics, but plaids, you know what it's great where I really wanted to show it was ginghams, because ginghams are so popular right now for spring that it's lightweight and it would be adorable in a gingham, especially the lighter ones that we've got, and they're good on both sides. You wouldn't even be able to tell what side is which. We wash this in Coca-Cola. When you wash in Coca-Cola, keep in mind that you're, you want it on a very mild, um, you know, like I have a gentle wash on mine. Just throw the Coke in and gentle, gently wash. Do not put it in the dryer because cotton in the dryer most likely will shrink. Mm -hmm. Now, not all the time. The linen didn't, but many times it will. So if you're, you know, if you're trying to find out, do a swatch. If you're doing the whole yardage, don't wash and dry the whole yardage, you might ruin your yardage. So depending on what your needs are, you just want to find out what does the washer do, what does the dryer do, maybe cut a little swatch. Don't do the whole thing, okay? But usually hot dryers uh, shrink cotton. Okay. Are we good with that? That was much easier to make. This one is much easier to make than the white one. Had I even left it as a circle. To me, in one seam, how much more can you ask? There you go. You hear that? Straight one from seat. Laura's nap. <laughs> so what, now what, say that again. Why, why this one was, well, I mean, this had a lot more work to it. I like it just as well and maybe even a little better because I did so much work on it. But we had the buttonholes here that we had to worry about. We had the uh, edging that we ha had to worry about. On this one, all I did was surge the edge. Makes a nice dark uh, edge. You got the contrast anyway and you got one seam. Okay, cool. Cool. And the beauty is, you guys, again, is, you know, if you're going on a trip and you just, mm -hmm. or, or anywhere, you know, just in your wardrobe, I think these tops, you know, I was at breakfast the other morning with some friends and I saw a girl walk in and she had on 
a pair of capris, and just a little topper on like this. Just a pair of capris and a t-shirt, but then she had a little topper on top of it, and I cannot tell you how it elevates the dressing. It does. It, it really, because capris and a t-shirt can look kind of just plain Jane, but it just really takes it up a notch. She looked so nice. Again, shears endless amounts of fabrics that you can do it in. So that's the goal, that you really understand all these fabrics. Okay, are we good on that one? You give fabric numbers on the live show, but I can't find any number references on the Silhouette website. Where should I be looking? You should be looking at the URL, and on every fabric, right under the description, it has a fabric number. Okay? So that's the best place to look. I would like to see the directions for the cape and this wrap. You would like to see the directions. Oh, I guess she needs to You guys, we do these free, okay? Mm -hmm. I can't start printing patterns and printing this. I'm giving you everything you need. You just need to watch it until you get all the information. Everything's there, mm -hmm. all right? Goal? Okay, I'm gonna give you like two more, so <laughs> come on, <laughs> It's 8.37, but anyway. Um, what fabric number was that, please? The one she That's has on? was Gosh, got me on that one papers, papers on your notes there we go uh 1554 yeah. 1554 was that one okay all right all right so now Perfect. we're going to move on the blue one yes okay but i'm going to show them we don't you don't have a yeah okay 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 yeah i want to uh, yes Let's go do the blue one. All right, so the other one that I thought, again, a couple years ago, you know, I was at a trade show, and you all know I did lots of trade shows for lots of years, and they were good and bad. Um, people were kind and unkind, just like today. But anyway, um, one of the things somebody said to me is, gosh, I just really like your clothes. They all look alike. And I thought, oh, I'm not sure if that's supposed to be a compliment or not. Um, so I appreciated her honesty. I decided I needed to really take a look at what I was making and did it all look alike. And I think where she was coming from was that they were structured. And absolutely, that's kind of the niche I was trying to cut out. I felt like we had enough weird stuff out there that didn't fit that, you know, and I don't, you know, weird is a good thing. But I, what I felt like we needed was fitted garments that actually fit people. But there was a time where I looked at it and I thought, you know, I really need a collection of different things. And so I've really kind of got a grouping. And, and the whole reason and the goal of mine to make that grade eight kind of bonus little pack was I wanted you to see some different options. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna take off what I have on and I'm gonna put this one on because I absolutely love this. And I want you to see how it changes up what I have on to something completely different. This is um, Casey's five-way top. It's pattern number 112. And Casey, who's just a wonderful customer, if you're watching, um, sent this to me. I, I can't remember if she sent me the link. I actually don't remember. But she sent me the information, and I fell in love with it, and I copied it. So what I love about this is how different it can look. So, and because there's several different ways to wear this, and I'm not gonna go, we've done this many times, I'm just gonna, my probably favorite wear is, way is to just twist it once and then pull it down. So this particular fabric is 1696. And I, again, it just makes a little, like a, almost like a little cocoon wrap, but yet it still has the fit in the back Still even has a French dart, believe it or not. <laughs> you know, so I've, I've wanted to take fit and the looseness of these artsy garments and kind of blend them to where, yes, they're artsy, but they still really look good and they still are very flattering. And so that's been the goal. So this is 112 and I wanted you to see that. I don't have to give you any directions because that's easy to do. The other one that I saw was the one Laura's gonna come in with. And this one is 95. This mm -hmm. is Brooks Top. This one came right out of Neiman Marcus. And we've talked about this before. I did not put, oh, I just left that edge where that's going. Mm -hmm. left everything I wrong. didn't put any closures on this, but you could. You know, there's in the pattern, there's a button that goes right there. Again, it was actually Casey's daughter 
who had this on. How about I've ruching the ruched sleeve? The sleeves, you can do all kinds of things. The goal is to kind of give you that base, and then hopefully you guys will come up with all these Laura differences, all these creative differences that are amazing when we go through and do all those changes. Okay, so I wanted you to see that. The next one I want you to see is a wrap that Eileen Fisher did, and I think it's, it's a couple hundred dollars. But I literally saw it at the store, I copied it for you, and I want, and we're gonna see it. And I'm gonna put it on. All right, so this is, and we're gonna bring up a picture of this. Oh, I'm sorry, I need to answer questions. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Feel this fabric. Feels like cashmere almost. It does, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Is it better to use a more stable or less stable knit with Casey's five-way top? Is it better to use a more stable or less stable knit? And it doesn't matter. It doesn't really make a difference. You can use a one-way or a two-way. It's really not going to make a difference. So this right here, I'll, I'll put it on and then I'll explain to you how to make it. Eileen Fisher, remember, is big on wraps, and she does some very creative stuff. So this is number one, this is how you wear it. And I'm gonna have you pull up picture number two, not one, but picture number two, EF wrap two, please. Yep, there mm -hmm. you have it. So you can see, and the reason I did that picture is because I know you can't see all the way to the bottom, but you can see the back. And you can see that one, it's asymmetric. Um, I'm gonna show you here that that side is longer than that side. There's fringe at the bottom because I took advantage of the selvage. And then I'm gonna go to picture number one. And what she does is this piece stays here and this piece wraps up over the shoulder. However you want to do it, a million different ways. Or you can take the shorter piece over here and she actually and the one in the store has a, you know those big safety pins we used to have mm -hmm. actually puts a big safety pin in the shoulder I mean you can do a cowl there's so many things you can do with it I actually just like wrapping up in it because it's so soft I forgot I'm sorry this fabric is 1737 1737 and I did two because I want Laura to try one on okay Okay, so basically I'm, I'm going to show you how to do it here in just a minute. I'm going to take the long side and when you're using a cotton, the stuff kind of sticks so that it, you don't really have to do much to it, but it really gives a cool silhouette. I'm going to take the long side and wrap it up this way. Anyway, okay, so this one, what I did because this one's a knit, you can do it out of woven also. Doesn't matter what it is. I'll show you how to cut it in just a second here. I have a question. Pants fit okay when standing, but when I bend my knee and hip like squatting, the knees bind up and the thighs and butt are tight. Which seam should I add fabric to to fix the knee? That's the circumference issue. If you have no mobility, no mobility equals not enough circumference. So add to your circumference at the side seams. Do any of the current blouse patterns have concealed button placket? No. 300 didn't, we discontinued it. Okay? Okay. You want to take that off? Sure. And I'm going to have her put this on. So again, keep in mind, this has a long side and a short side. So find some fabric you like and you just put it on. I'll show you how to do all that. Okay. Yep. 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 This is short side over long side. I mean, that's this the long, is the long side, side over, over the, the short, short side. side. So yeah. you can see it has several different effects based on the fabric, the cowl. Uh, you can put a brooch there, the mm -hmm. pin. You can do whatever you want to kind of keep it there. And the back just hangs down. Mm -hmm. If you wear it, it open, it. it does fit. Well, this is a, I think it's a silk or a cotton. I'm mm -hmm. not sure which. But anyway, if you just let it hang, could you see yourself doing that if you had a great belt? Do you ever wear yes. belts? When I found one to fit. Okay, mm -hmm. good. And then you blouse over mm -hmm. and then just have this as an overlay. And so the top here in the back, I have her turn around. It's just cute. 
it's really artsy, but it's really cute. I think it just really, I really like it. I like it not only how it looks, but I love the fabrics and different fabrics. So I did it in two different fabrics, just so you can see how different those two different fabrics are. And then, um, can I have a question? Yeah. How did you, how large did you determine the buttonhole opening? I call it a buttonhole opening. The armhole. The armhole. Okay. Okay. So let's go, you guys. What I did on this one is I just drew it out. Okay. So that you could take a screenshot of this illustration. So we're going to go to that. That's your cue, Benjamin. <laughs> oh, sorry. <what? laughs> the entire crowd. He's reading questions. It's hard to read questions and, and you know, everything I throw out at him is kind of hard to do. Okay, so there you have it. So the length of the fabric is 74 inches, which is just a little bit over two yards. I'm going to say two yards. That's 26 wide. And then if you notice, it's just one layer of fabric. It's all done on one layer. If you go 22 inches in, and notice it's six inches from the bottom. That's actually going to be the top because the shorter side is the top where the armholes are. The longer side is the bottom. Okay. So you go in 22 inches and you cut an armhole that's six inches, six inches from the bottom, but it's nine inches in length. And that's gonna be 11 inches from the other edge of the fabric. So if you notice, if you take the six plus the nine plus the 11, that equals the 26. And then you go 22 inches in an armhole, 22 inches more, another armhole, you've got 30 inches left. And if you add those numbers up, you notice that it equals the 74. So what I would do, if you've got a piece of fabric, I would simply just do it up and then you can play with it. Like for me, this one, I've got this belt that is an amazing belt that I would just wear, I would wear this down and mm -hmm. not even wrap it or do anything and just put the belt on it. And what yeah, I lo love about it is it's, first off, it's it's right. a, it is, the fabric is amazing. It is just incredible. Now what I did, because I like the fabric so much, I actually doubled this. Oh. So I cut my two yards and then I folded it in half and I left it that I, instead of the one layer, I actually cut it as two. And then on the armholes, if you notice what I did, you can't see, of course you can't notice. I guess mm -hmm. I forget I'm talking to them, <laughs> not you. <laughs> um, I cut the armhole and then I tucked the edges in against each other and just mm -hmm. top stitched all the way around. So that's how I made the armholes. All right, so easy enough. Does only one side have a sleeve? No sides have a sleeve, there's no sleeve. It's sleeveless. You could wear a long sleeve underneath, but also I was thinking it'd be a great beach cover up. It's just a fun, fun wrap. Over $200 for this little wrap, you guys, you can do this, okay? So again, we're leaving those directions up. Do you guys know how to take a print screen and, and do a screenshot? And then you can open it up and edit it, and then you can print it out so that you can actually print out these directions. And you can see that there's a knit, woven, woven. Any different fabric. Shears I think would be beautiful, flowy, all those kind of things. How you finish it is completely up to you. This one didn't hasn't doesn't have any finishes on it. No. I did use a selvage. selvage. Yeah, whenever you can use a selvage, I'm always pushing to use a selvage. Alright, questions on that one. That's called the EF wrap, is what I called that one. Does only one side yeah we answered that. That's okay. I made the yoga skirt, it's shorter in the back when I wear it, how do I fix it? You scoop out the front. So the hem is never to blame. When it's hanging longer in the front, you're gonna pull the front up. And as soon as it's, you know, put that same skirt on, you can fix that skirt. Put the skirt on, pull up the front, and once the hem is even, then draw a line where your waist is, take the waistband off, cut that off. Don't take it out of the waistband because you'll ruin the look of the yoga skirt, and then sew the waistband back on and it'll be at your waist, but the hem will be even. So when you have a crooked body and a crooked skirt, it equals perfect is the goal. <laughs> and none of us have good bodies. They're all crooked. It's just a matter of how we skew the fitting to make them look even. Is mm -hmm. that fair? It's fair. Yeah. Okay, what else? We got it? It does really help to draw the illustrations, you guys. I really know that. I couldn't draw George's wrap. I, I don't know how to draw that.
How deep is the armhole cut? You're going to have to be specific here. On this one we're talking about, you can see right there it's 9 inches. The other one that we did, the circle, was 6 inches. But it, that's double, so it was actually 12 inches because you've got them folded in half. Sometimes I feel like it's a test, like when I go somewhere and someone says, well, how is this? I'm like, I don't remember. You have to go back and watch the webcast. <laughs> All right, so here's the goal. I wanted to give Laura a few minutes because I really like to, you know, y'all just like her. And you like her because you say you relate to her and you understand kind of where she's coming from. And I think she's done amazing. Like, Thank I, you. And I think that all of you can do the exact same thing. So I wanted to ask her, is that true? <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, absolutely. Um, what's changed for you? Um, that is a real deep question, but I have given it some thought. Okay. To me, this was a two-part uh, adventure. There was the adventure part of it, which was fun and exciting and challenging, but then there was the journey part where it was a learning experience and sometimes not exactly a, a fun thing, but you, but you learn. But those two things to me equal confidence. Oh, that's really interesting. Confidence equals comfort to me. If you're comfortable in something, you can do it. I mean, if you really think about it and want it badly enough. Um, and so, uh, without, uh, and when I say confidence, I don't necessarily mean self-confidence or sewing confidence or it to me it's comfort is actually almost better than than confidence because if you're comfortable you are confident to me um so that leads me uh, in you're my talking journey. about almost like a addressed physical comfort, Absol confidence absolutely absolutely as well as mental because your okay. journey is mental too um, okay. uh, so to me that lead that led me to ask a, a question and to make a comment uh number one I now ask of my, when I look at a garment, I say, is this a basic garment? Is this a um, accent garment? Or what the heck, I just want to sew it. Those okay. three things. If it's a basic garment, <laughs> you, cool. you're, you're well That's on the cool. way home because it'll fit in with your current wardrobe. If it's an accent, you can choose what part of your wardrobe you want to accent. And the third one, you just have fun with, in my opinion. Uh, and the second thing that I learned from this is that I never used, I, I paid attention to current trends, but many times I'd say, oh, not for me. Now I say, hmm, if I do this and this, well, just maybe. It could work for it me. It could work for me, absolutely. Oh, I like so I'm, try, I'm trying things that I would have never worn. Yay. And I, two, two examples would be the white sleeveless tunic that I inserted the lace back in. First of all, I don't normally wear tunics that fitted, and secondly, I hadn't had much experience with lace. Love it, but I'm not sure I would have tried this. This, this was part of my journey, and the, and the second garment. So push yourself a little absolutely. bit. Absolutely. Push yourself. Right. Look around, and if there's trends you like and you see, challenge yourself to make them yours, right. to somehow make them yours. And the second thing is um, on the, uh, the little cover-up, the uh, orange and white polka dot. Mm -hmm. When Peggy said, now I want this to kind of be waist length and the the uh, tunic to hang longer, I thought, oh geez, what am I gonna get across the street with this? Well, I tried it and really I liked the waist length uh, and I made it again in the red fishnet, mm -hmm. which went over the dress with the red flower. And it's such a great look to have yeah. the longer top right. and then a shorter little top on top. The jean jacket's done like that. There's a right. lot of trends right now that mm -hmm. are like that. So, But I'm not sure I would have tried that. Yeah, I would have I would have made that. Because it's kind of a longer. young look, or we think it's a yeah. young look, but yeah. it's not. It's a great look hey, for all 77, ages. my confidence is soaring. 77, <laughs> you guys. Yay! Okay, so the other thing we have to get to is what? you have to tell them how to make your flower. Oh, well, that was easy because actually I didn't, I, that was not an original with me. It was, again, in my stash from a jacket that I had just saved all the little doodads on the jacket and cut them out, and so then I just applied it onto the denim uh, a long tunic is actually what it was. That really was all cute. that it was, and then trimmed the neckline. So, line. how did you form the flowers? Did you use some type of pattern? No, or it was just on that? it was just applique. That flower was on a jacket at one time. I see, or okay. a long jacket, I should say. So, no, I can't say the flower was original with me. So, as far here's as an idea: it. look around for stuff like that yes. that's on purses, that's on, like I think. Goodwill and discount stores are gold mines mm -hmm. because there's all kinds of stuff. But if you look at how can I take them off and what else can I do mm -hmm. with them, 
And I know you guys are thinking, I don't have time for that. I get it. But just always keep it in your mind that you're looking for stuff like that and then have a stash. Yeah, <laughs> stash. Stash is a good part. How many times has she said she's pulled something out of her stash? Now I oh, live across the street and Howard's going to build a second floor of that He is. House he is. We were investigating that, you know, <laughs> closing the garage or something. All right. Are there questions we can answer for you tonight? Because it concludes our grade eight. Mm -hmm. I think, I really hope that you'll see this as something that applies to all of us Fun. as a base as to where to start. Get your fit down and then it will, your sewing mm -hmm. will just be so much fun. Mm -hmm. You know, Laura left me several webcasts ago. <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't had any questions, hasn't had any issues, you know, just a hi, Laura, see you Monday. Yeah. Are the armholes simply a slit? They are originally, and then it's a million, not, not a million. There are numerous ways you can finish it. Laura finished it with a grosgrain mm -hmm. ribbon. Um, I just tucked the edges and turned them under and surged them or and not finished at all. Them numerous things you can do so the armholes are a slit to start with and then depending on your fabric or what you decide creativity wise you can take it and what you decide to be peggy you actually make me want to sew a garment for myself <laughs> well of course how can you not want to sew i asked that question I can actually get my tops to fit. And Laura, you are beautiful and so <laughs> much fun. fun. I had fun. Yay! <laughs> um, do you currently have a good fabric for Casey's top? I think this fabric that I made it out of is like amazing. I picked it because it was soft. So mm -hmm. I think I do, and this is 1696. I think there was quite a few. Honestly, I had a hard time deciding what I wanted to make it out of because there was several that were really nice but I loved both sides of this um, I love the color I, I just really really liked Works. it 1696 are we good how do I do darts on patterns that is not a webcast kind of question <laughs> how do I do darts on patterns like sew them you mean or put them mm -hmm. or how do I do darts um, buy a silhouette pattern and it's included. I'm not sure. Sorry, you guys. I'm not sure how to answer that question. Or better yet, don't sew the darts and you fit them on you. Yeah, on vertical darts, uh -huh. you want to yeah. drape them. You want to uh -huh. drape the vertical darts. The horizontal darts put in and then, you know, like you, if you go back to the original when we were fitting the tank top, oh my. we had to lower it on Laura. Yeah. So uh -huh. you just make a slash all the way across and then you can lower that down. I have never attended any of your courses in Spiffy. Would you recommend I start, what would you recommend I start with? Online course versus seminar versus workshop. So I appreciate that question. If you don't mind, I'm gonna take a few minutes to answer that. In person, we do draping. I don't think personally there's any other way to teach that except in person. So that's why it's in Dallas, it's why it's in person. That's Spiffy one and Spiffy two. Spiffy one is just the base. Spiffy two is just practicing the base. You can't do Spiffy two unless Spiffy one because I want you to make sure you have the base and I wanna make sure that that base that you have is correct. The online course has nothing to do with fitting. That is pattern making. So that is how to take something and, and take it from this pattern to this pattern to this pattern. It's not fitting. So you have, remember our three components. We have the designer, the pattern maker and the sewer. So the designer and the, the pattern maker is the one who does patterns, which is the online course. The draping and the fitting of that is the spiffy. So those are just two different arenas. Personally, I think you could take all of them and your sewing would increase tenfold. Mm. So I kind of forgot while we were talking about that, I really want to take a minute to talk to you about PBS because man, Last time I said to you guys, I need your support, it was incredible. I mean, it was absolutely incredible. Number one, you called the stations. That doesn't cost anything. And I'm gonna tell you something, there are stations that have put us on that did not have us on because of your phone calls, seriously. So I can't even pay for that kind of PR. You know, you guys are invaluable in that arena because we're doing a new series. Laura and I were talking about this because most people don't know how it works and I totally I understand don't. that. But that means me, I pay for all production costs, everything. Then we pay for PBS to air the show. So there's lots of cost involved. 
and anything you guys contribute like if there's the series if there's anything you feel like you want to do the black book right now we have and you get the, that now and then when the series airs the frustration is or the beauty is it's PBS the frustration is it's PBS mm -hmm. you know? they tell me what we can do and if they change it then I change according to what they say so the 600 series that we filmed last August that was supposed to air this spring so that's when we thought we would deliver. They backed that up. It's not a bad thing, it's not a good thing. They just, it is what it is. They backed it up till fall. So we can't release any of those DVDs until Aww. they start to air those shows. So I hate that, that that's the way it is. I just can't do anything about it because they own distribution on that particular show. We are filming a new one because they, when they want a new series, which they ask for a new series, they want it within two weeks. And so. That's not time for us to film a new series. So we kind of have to just do it, knowing that they're going to pick it up. We have great faith they will. Um, but that's why we're filming the 700 series. And we're excited. It's gonna, a great series. We're really, really excited. I've asked Laura to be on it. I guess that's putting you on the spot. I shouldn't say that, huh? Well, well yes, we were, gonna, we were going to discuss We're talking. Do, we're talking. Do they allow you content? I mean, no, there. I, as far as content goes, I'm completely free to do yeah. whatever I want to do. I will tell you, though, no, I won't tell you. No, we're gonna have, sorry, can't do that. That's probably not a good thing. But anyway, it's a really exciting series. Our guests are over the top. I'm extremely excited about who our guests are. And you know, it can always fall through. So even though they have plane fare, you never know. But anyway, we'll announce that after the fact. How's that? And then we'll mm -hmm. go from there. But anything you guys can do to help us on the series is really, really appreciated. The phone calling, all of that kind of stuff, it really does work. Don't say it doesn't work, it does work. It really does. Okay, so having said that, we're our PBS drive, our Kai scissors are coming yeah. up. Don't buy Kai scissors until we start a little bonus on that. Our Stow City tables, mm -hmm. we're going to have a little bonus on that. It's all this month is kind of going to be our PBS drive. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching, Thanks. for sewing, for just being so kind. We really appreciate it. We love what we're doing, and thank you. All right, so Bye. from all of us and Laura, happy sewing from Silhouette Patterns.